dropped up on my phone this morning that it's five years ago to the day that we were building the set in Sheffield. Uh, and I I don't know if I thought that this is where we would be in five years' time. Did you? Rupert Lord, our producer, definitely did. And he had this vision, I think, for it since day one. And, you know, bloody mindedness has got us a long way. But it's incredible to be here, it really is. It feels so beautiful. And, you know, the amount of people it took to get us here is so special. So many people have worked so hard to get us to this moment. So to be able to celebrate this show, to celebrate this story on a stage and on a platform like this is unbelievable. And it really is a dream come true. I think the Gillian Lynn is like the perfect place for the show. I don't see how it could fit anywhere else really and sometimes we get in there and everyone's like oh it gives us quite a feel like similar to the Olivier. It's a perfect fit. I mean the Gillian Lynn is a very brutalist building and the, the, the main character of our play is a brutalist estate in the middle of Sheffield so you really can't write, <laughs> you can't write that can you? It's brilliant. Well, it's very difficult to summarise the journey of a new musical very briefly. It takes a long time and a lot of people and a lot of effort. Um, and uh, uh, I'm just tremendously proud that we didn't lose heart along the way. Uh, we started, we first performed for the public in uh, 2019 in Sheffield at the Crucible. Um, we had plans to bring it back that were scuppered by COVID. We came out the other side of that, we did bring it back in Sheffield, it transferred to the National in the co-production uh, and then a year after that production closed we've, we've ended up here. It feels feels unreal to be honest, we started in Crucible telling the story of Sheffield to the people of Sheffield and then we got to go to the Olivier and now we're on the West End, it, it doesn't feel real yet to be honest, but it's good fun. So obviously I'm a, an OG, I think there's only two of us left. Um, so. From the minute I read this script, I was like, I know these people, I know her, I know, I want to tell this story. It's people that don't, you know, get the opportunity to be seen and heard, that it's really important. So for anyone who has yet to experience standing at the Sky's Edge, uh, we follow three families over the span of about 60 years, starting in the 60s where um, Park Hill Estate is a utopian dream, pulling people out of slums, giving them a new chance, uh, through the 80s where things are very run down, through um, into the present day where they're reframed and repackaged in a sort of public-private partnership. It's a story of gentrification, it's a story of hope and belonging and sanctuary and what it means to sort of call somewhere home fundamentally. Being a newbie and joining the cast, a, a very successful cast, and it's been done several times, it feels like the pressure's slightly off because they've done all the hard work in some ways, but um, I mean it's always nice to be part of a success, but this show has a a very special place in many people's hearts and indeed mine. I mean, I feel like the show has been created by really, like people that really care about it and we've stepped in, but we've wanted to create the same amount of care. So I've taken that seriously, you know, we have a responsibility to continue it, the show being that brilliant. So yeah, it's a beautiful thing. I mean, the person who played this before me got nominated for an Olivier and I think that's my <laughs> um, But it feels really rewarding because um, I feel like roles like this don't come along so often and so taking on a show that is already so beloved and already so thought of and already so like already touching people's hearts I mean it does half the job for me and I'm like great great yeah I mean like initially no pressure right so you just want to do it justice because I know I saw it at the national and it was a hit and you're just like please let it still be that um, and obviously you want to recreate it, you want it to feel new, you want it to feel different um, but fundamentally the bones of the piece are so strong um, and yeah but, but I feel relieved, I feel very relieved that we're, we're open now and we can enjoy it. It's a proper grower of a show as well, you know, they're, so, they're such complex characters that they deserve time. I, I feel like a bit of a veteran but also having fresh eyes and fresh energy in the space has made me rediscover new things as well. So there have been moments where I've been like, oh, I've, I've not heard it like that before. So it really is a, a symbiotic relationship between all of us. It's beautiful. It's like Park Hill, you know, it's had so many generations and, and the ghosts are still there. So everything that's gone before, they're all there, they're in my heart, they're everywhere. I can see them everywhere. And then welcoming new people who get it as well and just open their hearts to tell this story. I feel like, you know, it, it, nothing can stop it because 
you know, it's about community and hope and everyone telling the story together and new people only make that better because it's the next generation and the next, it's, it's the play. Any awards? <laughs> we're, we're, we're from Yorkshire and it would be boasting. Uh, so, a UK Theatre Award, <laughs> um, uh, two Olivier's, um, uh, South Bank Sky South, Arts Awards, yes, um, uh, an Exposed Award from yeah. Sheffield, which is a lovely one. We got a degree, we got an honorary degree uh, from Sheffield Hallam. Yeah, um, Adam Hugo got a stage debut award, I think, of the first yes, production. Yes, um, right, yes. Yeah, and now, yeah, an honorary degree. So, the show's full name is Doctor Standing at the Sky's Edge, I think, officially. <laughs>